you know, people think we just like wake up and sign some sign a exactly. piece of paper upside down and go back to sleep and a check shows up under our pillow. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I know. Like the real estate fairy. <laughs> Vlog, what's up? This is Lynn from Atlanta, Woodstock, right? Yes. And she came to shadow me today and um, so I appreciate her coming all the way down here to see me. Where'd you find me? On the internet. Where, which, which platform and how long ago? Uh, I don't know if I started getting emails in my email to right. start looking you up. I think that's how Okay, yeah, you're with Remix, so, you know. That would have been Brianna. She got all the Remix email addresses and Put them in a, you produced Lynn. Wow, look at that. Mm -hmm. So, also, side note vlog, check this out. Today is April 1, April Fool's Day, and also marks my five year anniversary, I guess I'll call it. No alcohol or drugs since April Fool's Day 2014. Hit rock bottom, whatever that is. Rock bottom for me is different. You know, everybody has a different rock bottom, but somehow I hit mine, and I said that was it. So that was March 31st, 2014. I said, if I wake up the next day, I'll never drink or do drugs ever again. And that's what I've done. It's been crazy. It's been a crazy five years. So what can I help you with? So oh, yeah, I'm this is live. Just find out some how to get going. Like I mean, what's your biggest question? We'll start there. Your market, much like Panama City Beach, the owners mm -hmm. of condos live out of state. So mm -hmm. how do you do a listing appointment with them? Um, do you do it sometimes over the phone? Mm -hmm. Because they're not here a lot of the time. Well, a lot of times, um, a lot of times they'll call or I'll talk to them and they'll say, I'm gonna be down there in two weeks or I'll be down there in a month or whatever, you know what I'm saying, and I wanna meet with you then. A lot of them already know me because we've done deals or we've talked before and we have a lot of rapport with the weekly email and stuff and so they'll just call me, say I'm ready to put on the market, send me the documents. So I'll just docu sign on the documents. If I never talked to them before, you know, a lot of times they want to come down and meet me and stuff like that before making any moves. But sometimes not. Sometimes I'll talk to them for the first time and I'll send them docs that day. I do like to see the property before I price it. I got to go look at it. Um, so I have to go see it because I got to get my eyes on it to figure out like what it's worth, the condition, the paint, the view, the floor, the furniture, all those different variables. I mean, it's kind of are easy to price because all the same building have the same layout and so they're pretty easy you know a good range mm -hmm. but then that range kind of depends on what the condition of it is right. you know so I got to go look at it to see if we're on the top end of that range or the bottom end or the middle range you know of the spectrum of what it could be worth minus the condition but yeah I mean it varies sometimes it is over the phone but okay. you know yeah you just do what you got to do, you know what I mean? Whatever they want to do. They want to wait and meet you if they're ready to go now, whatever, you know. It's like I always say about the 5% high, low pressure, 95% 5, low pressure, 5% high pressure. It's like after you made that connection and you feel the vibe that you really connect with them, you know, and then you also feel like they're ready to do something. Now you can hit that 5% high pressure and say, you're ready, you know, you're ready to put it on the market, you know, let's, you're ready to move forward, or, you know, whatever, so. You know. Okay. When you're circle prospecting and you call member or numbers that just skip, like you can't, it doesn't even get to leave a message, um, do you go back and call again? Like, how do you work that? Do you just kind of skip through and then some maybe the next day or something or later go back and retry I just go to another seven. building. There's no right or wrong answer, you know what I'm saying? You can go back and try to call those numbers again, you know, if you want to. Then not how much time you kind of like 
See, that's, that's what I'm me. about. I'm about time, you know? I know, like, if I go through the numbers and it didn't work, you know, then you're kind of starting to beat your head against the wall instead of just going the, you know, the, the path of the least resistance is just to call another complex or another subdivision, you know? Okay. Keep that freshness going instead of just starting to, you know, any friction you create is big because that's, that friction is, is holding you back from doing other things, you know? So, I don't know. There's no right or wrong answer, you know? And then, I just want to know what your opinion is if I should only concentrate on my marketing and my job, you think? Because I could come down here now that I've got your program and go spend some of my time at Penn City Beach and work part of the year there doing the circle prospecting and get listed in the sort I of think thing. you should concentrate on one market. You know, and then if you get deals from your sphere of influence or something from the other market, either do that deal or refer it out. You know, one of the two, because you can refer it out and get the 25%, not put any work in, you know, or you can handle the deal if you wanted to, because you have a license, right? Yes. So you have a Georgia and Florida license? Yes. Georgia, Florida, Florida line. That's like a band, right? <laughs> yes. Um, but concentrate on one you know what I'm saying and really like just horn in and just completely okay. master that one and then if you get stuff from the other market you know either work it or refer it out you know but you need to master you need to really put all your energy into one that's what I thought you yeah because if you spread it out then you're just you know you're not really giving on er everything you got in either one and that little bit of extra you know effort and that one market goes a long way rather than just putting a little here a little there you know okay that's kind of what i thought but i wanted to see yeah that was your you need to process. figure out which yeah. one you want to do and then just go all in on that market okay. you know what do you, how do you get business um well i've joined a team and we were doing some cold calling to the people that register on the site Mm -hmm. But a lot of people that register on the sites put in that they're 12 or more months out. So, yeah. I mean, this is my thing. I decided since I've signed up for the program to start concentrating on it right. to get listings. And right. I've just started, I said it last Monday that I was going to focus on doing that. So, mm -hmm. I've just really started hunting down for that calls, circle prospecting. I did a few Fisbos last week. So, you've done some circle prospecting? Yes. How'd it go? Um, pretty good. I actually had a lot of people pick up. Of course, everybody says we're not looking to do anything right now. Um, one person, because I don't have a sale, you know, I just sent your script. My house down the road from you just sold. Yeah. Um, they were like, one guy asked if I had sold the house, and I just kind of skipped over it. And I said, no, it, but it was one right down the street from you. Right. There's anything that I can do. Mm -hmm. um, and one person kind of just joking and saying, hey, yeah. Some more than its value, but yeah. Um, I got a couple of emails, which was, you know, what the goal is. Yeah. Um, to try to work that. So, so when they say no, you say, is there an agent you would work yes. with and stuff? Yes. Yeah. One was like my mother-in-law. Yeah. Was, um, another one is I'm probably not going to sell until 2021, but you know, send me your Perfect. card, which I did. That's I mean, great. You know, right around the corner. <laughs> in my card. You know. Yeah. So it's been, it's funny because it's just been different. People look at, people look at like two years out like it's a long time or six months out like it's a long time. That's now business. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that's right around the corner. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy how people, you know, they want, they want to deal like right now. They want to close right now. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's just weird thinking about people's mentality behind like now business and it's like, did you see the video I did on how to closing deals now? Uh, last week? I think I did. Yeah, the close real estate deals now. You know, the philosophy behind it, you know, there's no now business, there's no future, it's all the same thing. Like, some, anybody can buy or sell now in, at any moment, you know? I mean, the people signing up on the website, the buyers, that's supposed to be now business. They're all saying 12 months out, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all saying 12 months out. <laughs> I mean, where's the now business at? Yeah. You know, expires, yeah. you know, want to hold off for six months. For sale by owners want to, you know, try it, try it on their own for six months. No now business there, you know what I'm saying? Right. But either one of those avenues could be a deal right now, you know? I have another question for you. Mm -hmm. So, you're 
there's no script. Um, yeah. I met with one last week, and part of it is to go where I can say I've got a pocket listing and try to get it in our system where we have approximately 4,000 potential buyer leads. But I didn't know until I got there when I was talking to him that he's got a friend who's in real estate. He's waiting until his two years of ownership is up before paying capital gains. So it was kind of like, oh man, well he's already got an agent that he'll probably list it with because he said uh -huh. probably May 9th he's going to put it on the market. Uh -huh. Like, so how would you, I mean, would you have even gone or would you have asked that during the phone conversation and then if he had said, yeah, I've got a friend? Uh, you know, I phone. mean, either way, I mean, if you ask in the phone conversation and you know, when you ask that question and they tell you they have a friend or whatever, you know what I'm saying, you can tell by the way they answer it whether you need to continue pursuing it or not or how serious that relationship really is, you know, and you can make a decision. I mean, it's different every time, you know. Sometimes for sale by owners, you're just trying to get get there, see the property, you know. It's, you know, it's a different conversation than circle prospecting and stuff, you know, but you can ask it for sure. I like to ask him because I want to know where I stand, you know, what the hell, and then, you know, then I can decide if I want to continue, continue going or not, but, yeah, I mean, you know, um, so you're wondering if you should ask asked it in the beginning? Yeah, when I first had him on the phone. Probably. Probably. Uh, a lot of people have agents and they switch, you know, all the time, too, so it's hard to say. You know, that that's not like the end all be all. That's why I say you have to listen to how they're saying it and figure out if you, you know, and also even if they aren't have that great of a relationship, sometimes it's still not good to pursue it, you know, because now here you are kind of how does that look to the owner? You know, he said that he has a real estate agent and then you're still trying to, you know, so it's almost like a, a dead end road a lot of times, but. It's all about the connection though, you know, if you connect and they like you and then, you know, that's what it's all about. So do you have your, your so you're on a team? I'm on a team. Are you trying to go single? Um, Are you just going to stay on the team? I'm going to stay on the team for a yeah. while. Um, just to, you know, I've learned a lot from being on the team. Yeah. The yeah, that's good. You got to be where you feel like they're going to teach you. If they're not teaching you, you don't feel good about it. You gotta go. As soon as you feel that pressure on your shoulders, like they're not teaching you enough, or they don't look, at, they're not looking out for you, or they're just using you, or you know, or something, you know, or you've learned all you can learn, and there's another opportunity. You feel like you can learn more, you know, and you feel like you're losing out on knowledge somewhere else. You know, it's time to go. You know, but yeah, you know. just want a piece of what, just a bit of what you're doing. I think the biggest thing is to understand the philosophies behind what I do. Like, cause a lot of people are, are trying to, a lot of people are trying to figure it out and, you know, figure out how I'm just kind of laid back and don't really care about much. But that, that's kind of like the method behind my madness, you know what I'm saying? Because I realized when the market crashed and all this stuff and all the work I put in, how unlimited it is for everybody. And so it doesn't matter to me if somebody chooses another agent or, if I lose a deal or or whatever, I'm gonna work hard to get those deals. I'm not just like letting them go, right. obviously, you know. But um, but I don't care, you know. That's their choice, you know, to do whatever they want to do. But when you understand the limitedness of it, and then it's all predicated on how much work you put in, you know, then. You know, and closings happen every day and all the little things, you know, that I talk about. Um, you know, and you focus on those relationships, you know, as opposed to the transactions, then you don't have anything to worry about, you know, and then you don't care about markets crashing because, you know, you know how the whole thing's going to unfold and, you know, I mean, when the market crashes, I'm just going to get on the phone and just completely start just completely crushing everything because I don't really make calls anymore. You know. yeah, I thought it was interesting when you said recently that you don't even call FISBOs or expires. I never just have. Do the live calls for, for us. Well, now, yeah, I just do the live calls for you guys, but 
before that, when I was building my business, I did, all I did was circle prospecting. I didn't do it for sale by owners expired. I dabbled in them here and there, and I got some listings, but I realized it wasn't near as efficient as circle prospecting. It's interesting. I mean, you said circle that. prospecting is such a passive way to build your business because most people don't want to do anything right now so you're developing this huge database with emails so people right. will do stuff later and then you do find people that want to do deals now buying and selling and so just being active is going to create business but then you know all those years of building a database when all that drops and all those people do stuff you know that's when your business just explodes can't really do that with for sale by owners because there's only so many of them and then right. they need baby, so much babysitting it's just so hard and then expireds expire i like expireds especially old expireds you know like go back six months or a year mm -hmm. when they were priced too high but now it's probably a good price um, even people that were priced way higher than what's supposed to be just talking to those people and developing those relationships the same thing as circle prospecting you know the expireds are the same thing to me as circle prospecting and they were listed before, so they're not scared to list it. They're okay with listing it. Sure. You know what I mean? For sub owners, they're kind of like, they want to try to do it on their own. Oh, you know? yeah. I had one lady that I caught last week. She told me she got hers on a contract in, a, in the first 24 hours. She was actually yeah. going real estate. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, because that happens every time. You know what I mean? Yeah, because it's right. just so easy, right? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, well... Let me know how the next 30 days works out for you. We have to deal with lenders, appraisals, inspectors, title companies, the buyer, asking weird stuff and doing weird things. You know, great, you got her under contract in 24 hours. Let me know how the next 30, 45 days work out, you know? Call me after it's closed and tell me you still want to be a real estate agent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're welcome to like hang out as long as you want, all day long, whatever. I got a. Uh, I'm going to continue this journey of trying to make a, get a deal to happen. Okay. Back to the nature at hand. This is like the Starship Enterprise. You know what I mean? This is where everything goes down.